Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Accidental Jive. It's been several months since we've been down in Florida and uh, during the COVID lockdown we've been entertaining ourselves with getting an electric drive system ready for installation on the sailboat when we return to Florida. Uh, sustainable energy is the, is the key here and we're looking at having solar panels as well as an onboard charger to be able to provide us with all the power we need for sailing. Some of the main parts of this we'll go over at a high level and then we'll delve deeper into the system. We have a large lithium battery which is managed by its own battery management system. Uh, we have an, a charge controller that determines when the charger needs to turn on to charge the battery either from shore power or from the solar charger which will be connected to solar panels. A 12 volt system which will be represented by our house batteries when we get to Florida charges the individual discrete components separate from the motor drive battery which will operate the motor. The motor is a 5 kilowatt motor from Thunderstruck Motors used in electric vehicles and is controlled by a Sevcon controller and several relays which turn the power on or off as needed, a key switch to turn the motor on, and a throttle control which will be connected up at the cockpit. We'll go over each one of these parts in more detail. It's very complex and probably will get a little bit more complex before we're done, but we'll try to explain each piece to you and move forward. Each one of our discrete components, such as the battery management system, the electric vehicle charge controller, our onboard diagnostics indicator, and our charger are all talking to each other over what's called the CAN bus. In the mid-1980s, Bosch Automotive in Germany was looking for a way to communicate, allow for communication between discrete components in automobiles. And that had led to today's technology, which we still use, which allows for discrete components in the automotive field to talk with each other in situations where there may be high interference, such as electromagnetic interference and uh, any other electrical perturbances associated with an engine. The CAN bus developed in the mid-1980s is still used today and is being used in the CAN bus system, which we have in our uh, setup for our electric sail drive. Each one of the components communicates over these green and blue wires in which information is sent from each component to talk with any other component in the network. The information is sent in packets with an address and an identifier or priority, which indicate the priority of the message, the identifier of what the type of message is, and the message itself, and the re address recipient as to who this message should be sent to. The battery management system, which controls the voltages of the, indi of the individual cells in the lithium battery, will tell the electric vehicle charge controller when battery voltages are dropping sufficiently because of usage by the motor to tell the EVCC to turn on the charger. If that's the case, a signal is sent from the BMS to the EVCC to tell the charger to turn on. The charger then sends a message to the charge charger itself to turn on charging. If we are connected to the solar panels, the solar charge controller will charge the batteries and the battery management system will keep the voltages aligned in level with each other. The onboard diagnostics is similar to what you have in your car underneath your steering wheel, most likely on the left hand side beneath your steering wheel is a port that technicians can plug into to read diagnostic codes when your check engine light or other light comes on to be able to ascertain what's wrong with your vehicle. We have an onboard diagnostics module which speaks over Bluetooth that plugs in to this socket. It transmits over Bluetooth to a display, in this case a tablet, which has appropriate software involved to read information about the motor, the temperature of the motor, how fast it's running, the charge of the batteries, how fast they're dissipating, 
and other critical information that we need to know on a real-time basis. This information also is received over the CAN bus network. So this little blue and green wire basically is an important string, artery, if you will, of information to be able to allow discrete components to talk with each other to allow the motor to run and for us to have information real time about our engine. We're going to be taking a look at our lithium battery, which is going to be used to power our sail drive. It was once used in an electric vehicle and now is ours for powering our sailboat. Um, it's a large battery. We'll take a look inside and see what it looks like. Unlike a regular car battery, it's made up of a series of cells. In this case, we have 13 packs of batteries, all wired together in series to increase the voltage. Each pack is made up of lots of little batteries, basically about like a AA battery. They look like AA batteries, like any conventional battery you'd purchase in the store. And there are a series of them in each pack that are wired together to make four volts. So from this terminal starting, to this terminal is 4 volts, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, all the way up to 52 volts at the end. So the total on the pack through the summation of each cell gives us the pack total, 52 volts, 48 nominal. So now let's take a look at the battery management system. We've talked about the battery. We've talked at a high level about the battery management system, but let's take a look more at this unit and with the electric vehicle charge controller and how they work and interrelate with each other. As we talked about earlier, they're all connected over the CAN bus to the various components. The battery management system is the heart of the battery. It determines what the voltages are in the battery and whether or not those voltages are within range or if they're too low to ask the charger to turn on the charger, if they're too high, to turn off the charger, and to balance the cells between each one of the packs that we discussed. I've plugged in using a serial cable, which basically on one end is connected to a USB port on my computer, the other end to a headphone jack, into the EVCC and the BMS. Each one of them is plugged in to a USB port on my computer. With that, we can set the parameters on each one of these units, and we can actually ascertain the current conditions of each unit and nominal operation values. Let's take a look on the computer, and we'll look at each one of the components. I have two screens up. This is the BMS, BMSC, and the electric vehicle charge controller. The BMS, I can look at the configuration by typing in specific commands to look at such information as the battery voltage minimum, temperatures which are specified, low values, and high values that the battery can be charged within or to dissipate to. I can look at the statistics of each cell and the values of voltages between each of the cells. If they're out of, uh, if there's a variance between them, I can actually balance the cells. And we can do a show which shows us that the voltage on the system is now at 51.87 volts, and each of the cells have a, has a variation of only 0 0.002 volts, so they're all pretty much the same. We can show the configuration, and we can see that the CAN bus is speaking at a specific rate of 250 kilobits per second, and we've got thermistors enabled to shut off the charging if we re reach 45 degrees centigrade. We can show the thermistors with this command, and see that we have 10 thermistors, each one labeled on the battery and associated here on this graph. The electric vehicle charge controller, relatively simple device. We can show here and see that it's in standby mode right now and it's talking to the TSM 2500 charger. Uh, the maximum voltage that we're allowed to charge is at 53 volts and the maximum current allowed is 25 amps. The maximum charge time is eight hours. And so we basically have here um, the ability to uh, trace um, all, of, all of the uh, data here. Uh, I've turned on tracing on the CAN bus, so we can actually look at data uh, coming on the 
electric vehicle charge controller, we can see that the battery management system is sending data to the EVCC. Likewise, we can turn trace off. Okay, we've turned the key. Um, we've, the system is powered up. Uh, we're receiving data from the OBD link via Bluetooth to our display. At this point, we're gonna start up the motor and watch the display. Wattage, amperage, voltage in our RPM. Con motor temperature and controller temperature. Motor and controller. All being displayed. And there we have it. There we have it. This is the complete system. The final piece in the configuration is the Victron Solar Charge Controller, which at this point is not configured, but will be connected to four 100 watt solar panels, each one 12 volt nominal, connected in series to make 48 volt nominal to then power onto the bus and provide power to the system and to the batteries, to charge the batteries. That's yet to be done. That's on the list, and we'll, uh, we'll get to that um, as our next step. But for now, this is an operational system with the charger on short power to charge the batteries and get us on the water. Hope you liked our videos and if you did click like or subscribe and we'll see you next time on the purple gallon accidental jive <laughs> on the accidental jive on the accidental purple that's it no <laughs> try again beep i hope you liked our videos and if you did click like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on the accidental jive is that it? That's it. Can I turn the fire off? Okay, let me turn the fire off. Fire's off. <laughs>